Hi, my name is Jamie O'Hoffer. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Platform Computing. And I'm Chris Porter. I'm, the, I'm a Product Manager for Platform Computing, managing HPC Cloud. The adoption of cloud in the HPC market is really getting exciting this year. You know, the trend came out probably, what, two to three years ago, people started talking about how could they get more dynamic resources into their environments. It first started out with people that were thinking more about how do they use Amazon as a new resource pool for their HPC environments. You know, today, people are getting past the initial adoption process of just thinking about how do I pilot this. Maybe some people are starting to use it in production type of environments, but still fairly immature. Yeah, I totally agree, Jay. Um, I really would characterize it as experimental. Yeah, it's a great source of uh, innovation. You know, I think that one of the things that's interesting about HPC Cloud is how can people get through that capacity constraint issue? Yeah. You know, can they all of a sudden get new resources on a very ad hoc basis so they're no longer constrained inside their existing environments? Certainly, certainly. And also it relieves them of that, of that horrible burden of I always have this hard cap of this is the amount of resources that I have and that's all that I can do today until I buy the next system. Cloud relieves them of that. While there's been a lot of experimentation with how to use Amazon and EC2, people first want to maximize their internal resource pools at their disposal because they've run into issues of compliance, security, data movement. So I think people are first going to take a look at how do they take their existing resources, make those more dynamic to meet their current needs, and then longer term, they're going to move into the world of how do I use public cloud resources. There's this, this concept of the missing middle that a lot of folks talk about. And that missing middle might be folks that are not using HPC today or just getting started mm -hmm. with HPC today. They don't have any local infrastructure to accomplish HPC. And they hear all these things about cloud. They may leapfrog all of that local data center, local infrastructure, paying and dealing yep. with hardware vendors, and just go straight into the cloud to know that they can just, instead of using capital expenditure, they can just go straight to sure. operational yeah. expenditure and get HPC that way. Yeah, I think the concept of you know HPC as a service, so accessing a software as a service, more of a turnkey transaction, and it really that pays you go, so they don't have to necessarily set up something in advance when they do have the requirements. Mm -hmm. They can go ahead and access that on right. an on-demand model. Platform is aiding uh, various customers that are interested in adopting cloud in a couple different ways. The first one is we've had a product called ISF for quite some time, which uh, is specifically designed to aid customers in adoption of their own enterprise er, enterprise level uh, private clouds. But also our traditional HPC customers uh, have recently had access to a new product called Adaptive Cluster, which allows them to change a static LSF environment into a dynamic private cloud. Today, one, one set of users are going to have needs. Tomorrow, it's going to be a different set of users with a different set of needs. Yep. And if you have a static environment, that simply isn't possible. Yeah, I think with some of our existing customers, what's really interesting is that initially people thought private clouds were all about virtualization. But we've really come to understand that you have the existing physical requirements. They also have the virtualization they want to use, but they don't want to be locked into any one vendor. So they want to be able to use VMware, KVMZ, and have that choice and flexibility, but then also access the external cloud resources for cloud bursting as they need to. So it's really being able to bring those three different types of resources together put them into a cloud, automate the provisioning that goes around it, and put a self-service layer at the very top and really maintain that flexibility. But with self-service, the end users can access all those dynamic resources without IT having to get involved every single time. Uh, software as a service uh, is a really inter interesting uh, phenomenon, I would call it at this point. It's certainly not the, the general case. and. I think the certainly the opportunity with software as a service is the ability for an end customer to be able to change that capital expenditure that they're doing for software licenses into something that's operational. When they need more, they use more. When they yeah. need less, they use less. And that's, of course, very attractive economically. 
But from the ISV point of view, there's a, there's a big uh, push, push and pull about how do they genera- generally guarantee the current revenue level that they're making and be able to know that they're going to still be able to make that next year. So yeah. there's a lot of challenges around software as a service. So, so it all comes down to the licensing issue. It really does. The, the, the ISVs, you know, how do end users take their existing licenses and move them in a software as a service consumption model? Uh, those ISVs have, have told us that the customers that they're dealing with have all said we need to have a cloud clause in the next negotiation, and so the customers are definitely keeping the eye on the prize. I like that not, cloud clause. That cloud clause, um, and they keep their eye on the prize. They don't know how they're going to use it, but they want to know that they can. You also think data movement's a, a big issue with you it know is. understanding which HPC workloads might operate well within a, a cloud environment? Certainly. Uh, just because we're talking about a cloud environment, we're talking about a remote remote computing facility that's connected via the internet, and that means you have to transfer a bunch of data across the internet. That's where the security co- comes in, but also a bandwidth com- problem. In private cloud, it's, it's interesting right now that people are really moving beyond the experimentation phase, and they want more of a holistic package of capabilities. So they're looking for things like self-service, chargeback, they're looking for automation and provisioning, but they want it to work with all the different types of resources they have inside their company, whether it's virtual, multi-hypervisor. So a lot of our customers have VMware, but they're looking at how do they maintain an openness and flexibility of choice going forward, because private cloud is, is a key layer in their infrastructure, and they want to make sure that they continue to have that flexibility going forward. What's also interesting is that we're taking more of an application-centric approach. I think a lot of people, when they think about private cloud, it's just at the infrastructure layer. But at the end of the day, people want to deliver applications. And so these are multi-tier applications that have both the infrastructure, the middleware, and the end application delivered in a holistic package. They don't want to piece these things together themselves. They want it to be integrated, work well together from day one. So from Platform Computing, thank you for joining us here at SC11. Thanks. Thank you.